This is Norm Chow. I am a metallurgical engineer and president of Kometco Research. I will be giving you a video tour of the Ionier Rhyolite Ridge Lithium Boron Pilot Plant. The pilot plant encompasses all unit operations to be designed into the commercial plant for the recovery of high purity boric acid and lithium carbonate products. The Ionier process flow sheet incorporates a collection of commercially available equipment that has been configured specifically to treat the rhyolite ridge ore in a straightforward manner. The unique mineralization enables lithium and boron to be extracted from crushed ore by simple vat leaching with sulfuric acid. The sulfuric acid is generated on site with a sulfur burner, which provides power and steam sufficient for the operation of the entire processing plant. Vat leaching is conducted at 60 degrees Celsius, leading to a target extraction of 90% for both lithium and boron. The majority of boric acid is recovered by primary crystallization, which involves cooling of the pregnant leach solution, forming crude boric acid crystals. Centrifuging separates the primary boric acid crystals from the crystallization mother liquor. The intermediate solution is processed through an evaporation circuit, which upgrades the lithium from approximately 1000 ppm to a target of 5000 ppm. Sulfate salts are removed from the evaporation circuit. The remaining solution is then cooled in a secondary crystallization circuit to remove additional sulfate salts and remaining boric acid. The crystallization and removal of non-lithium containing salt upgrades the lithium concentration from 5000 ppm to approximately 10,000 ppm, thus producing lithium brine for subsequent lithium recovery. The evaporation and secondary crystallization crystals are introduced into a flotation circuit. Hydrophobic boric acid crystals are separated as a flotation concentrate. The combined crude boric acid crystals are then recrystallized to produce high purity boric acid. The lithium brine is treated with lime to remove iron, aluminum and magnesium impurities. The purified lithium brine is then combined with sodium carbonate to precipitate technical grade lithium carbonate. Welcome to Kometco Research. As I walk towards the Ionier Rhyolite Ridge Lithium Boron Pilot Plant, I would be passing by our laboratories where support work is conducted. Here we have ICP metals analysis. Vendor testing for sizing of commercial equipment. Anion analysis. The pilot plant starts over here. This is the vat leaching part portion of the pilot plant where we do the extraction of the lithium and the boron from the ore. And it under, is undertaken in eight vats here. Vat leaching with sulfuric acid. The next uh, part of the pilot plant is what we call the evaporation crystallization circuit here. I'm gonna go through in a lot more detail later on, but. In this circuit, we basically remove sulfate salts and we concentrate lithium to a higher concentration and recover um, remaining boric acid as well. And you can see over there, we have the lithium circuit where we produce the lithium uh, carbonate and also recycle solutions that we, such that we maximize the lithium carbonate recovery. So there's minimal losses of lithium. This is leached ore, so this has already been leached. And you can see it's completely free draining and there's no clays, there's no solid liquid separation issues. This is a um, material that has been leached, so the minerals have been taken out and it freely drains. As you can see here, we've taken some samples here. The ore itself is freely acid leachable. It's actually a lithium project that freely leaches in sulfuric acid, similarly with the boron to make boric acid. Um, typical lithium projects require roasting if you have a, an alpha spotamine and you have to roast it to convert it to beta spotamine and you have to do a, a second acid acid roast as well at 250. Um, in this particular case, the material freely leaches in sulfuric acid. We get about 90% extraction of boron and lithium. We're pumping in heated water into the vats and it upflows from the bottom up and the water overflows into a pump box. 
in this pump box, we have acid addition. So we pump in sulfuric acid to target a preset um, free acid concentration. And this particular pump box is 100 gram per liter sulfuric acid. And that acid is pumped into the next vat over here and does the extraction, overflows into the pump box. There's acid addition again into the pump box and we basically pump this uh, solution containing uh, free acid back into the next and that's how the countercurrent leaching works. The pregnant leach solution containing the minerals dissolved in solution is, um, is uh, pumped out of the uh, final pump box here into what we call crystallizers. How a crystallizer works is that we cool the solutions from 60 degrees C down to 15 degrees C and that essentially crystallizes about half of the boron as boric acid. We collect boron in um, centrifuges, as you can see here, and we have many buckets that we have collected. We call this the crude boric acid, as I have samples here. The solution after centrifuging the boric acid gets pumped into totes. We call this crystallization mother liquor, and essentially it's the leach solution minus about half of the boron as boric acid has been removed. It contains about 1,000 part per million lithium and it contains sulfate salts consisting of sodium, magnesium, potassium, and a little bit of iron as well. Next. Part of the flow sheet involves evaporation. Uh, so we take the uh, crystallization mother liquor, we do evaporation here as we have an evaporator here, these are preheaters here. <clears throat> and these are evaporators that do evaporation under a vacuum. So we have a vacuum pump. We have a condenser. This is co condensing all the water that, that has been evaporated off of this uh, solution here. We're evaporating at 72, 73 degrees Celsius under vacuum. The point of using the vacuum is that it allows us to do the evaporation at lower temperature and this improves the dewatering of the, um, the salt crystals that come out of here. But essentially what we're doing here is we're concentrating the lithium from about 1,000 part per million to about 5,000 part per million at the end, and at the same time removing some of the sulfate salts consisting of sodium, potassium, and magnesium sulfates. And we collect that by centrifuging. After we see, achieved about 5,000 ppm lithium in the last evaporator, we send it to a cooling circuit here. This is called crystallization number two. And we have this at about five degrees Celsius here, five to six degrees Celsius, that's what we have here. And what we do here is we cool what we call the mother solution after we centrifuge out salts from the evaporators. The solution here is cooled to about five degrees Celsius and what we do here is we crystallize out non-lithium containing salts. That would be um, sodium sulfate and a little bit of the remaining parts of the boric acid comes out of here as well. And by removing salts that do not contain lithium, the lithium in solution upgrades and it becomes lithium brine. We target about uh, 9,000 ppm lithium. Now the salts generated from the evaporation circuit and second crystallization, this is the evaporation circuit and the second crystallization, contains some boric acid and uh, some entrained lithium as well. So we recover the boric acid by going into flotation, as you can see the flotation circuit here. The boric acid is hydrophobic, so there's no reagents added. We take the, um, the two salts and we mix it with mother liquor and we bubble it with air and what happens is the boric acid floats off the top and we make a second crude boric acid. The lithium brine that we have here, which is now, as I mentioned, about nine to 10,000 ppm lithium, which came after the second crystallizer there, enters the lithium recovery circuit. In this circuit, what we do first is we do a purification. So we have a pH adjustment circuit. This is uh, conducted by adding lime. So we have a lime slurry here and we neutralize this lithium brine to pH 8.5 and then to pH 10.5. And this essentially removes the magnesium, aluminum, and iron contaminants from the lithium brine. 
and we make a clean lithium sulfate solution. The drum containing lithium sulfate after neutralization and purification and is heated to targeting greater than 90 degrees C. And we have also another drum of sodium carbonate solution. These two drums heated. Um, the reason for heating is because lithium carbonate is less soluble hot. We pump it into what's called a draft tube um, baffled um, precipitation unit here. We call it the lithium precipitation reactor. This is a scaled down version of a commercial unit and basically it has um, draft tubes and baffles inside so that we increase contact time of the two solutions that we introduced. And they're basically pumped in one tube here, one tube here into the lithium precipitation reactor. And there's um, baffles and tubes that cause increased contact time. This flows down and up and then down and then up gives you contact time. And the lithium uh, carbonate is recovered from this valve here. So we recover a slurry that is filtered. The uh, precipitation uh, reactor precipitates about 60% of the lithium in solution. That's, that's normal how it's done in industry. Um, and then we do a filtration. The mother solution still contains lithium sulfate and uh, sodium sulfate that's been converted, that has been converted from the uh, sodium carbonate that was added. That uh, mother solution enters the uh, evaporation circuit, reconcentrates the lithium and crystallizes out sodium sulfate uh, salts that are removed from the circuit. And we basically concentrate the lithium here. The concentrated lithium solution is introduced back into the lime circuit here. So we use it for making the lime slurry, which is used to make the um, solution for neutralization. So that's the circuit here. This is the boric acid recrystallization circuit. Essentially this circuit here purifies the crude boric acid that was generated in crystallization one. And um, this, this takes the uh, crude boric acid and it makes high purity um, boric acid. As I can show you here, we've made just uh, some really white crystals, high purity boric acid crystals. We have many of these actually. Another bucket here. And um, it makes on spec boric acid.